Good afternoon, Professor Luke Donnery Post, President of ISS, Plenary Doctoral Committee, ladies and gentlemen. This afternoon, I will provide a summary of my thesis, which on, which is on income diversification in the Mekong River Delta. I will begin by giving a brief background of my research. Until the 1980s, Vietnam was one of the poorest countries in the world, characterized by economic stagnation and widespread malnutrition. Even this performance builds on the future of the country's economy was pessimistic and uh, there were little indication that Vietnam had any hope of raising the level of welfare. In response to this limited economic progress, the government began executing a comprehensive reform of the economy and society in 1986. With regard to economic reform, the aim was replacement of central planning with socialist-oriented market economy to provide enterprises and households greater autonomy in provision and trading their products based on market principles. After the loss of renovation, Vietnam enjoyed dramatic achievements. Annual average GDP growth accelerated to more than 7 percent. At the same time, Vietnam experienced a sharp drop in incident of poverty, which fell from 58% in 1993 to 15 and half percent in 2006. These dramatic achievements have been largely applied to success of various policy reforms implemented during the course of renovation. In addition to overall economic growth, this period has also witnessed noticeable changes in the structure of GDP with an increase in the share of industry and a decline in agriculture. The structural transformation together with the increasing trends of labor movement out of agriculture and into other sectors reflect a process of diversification characterized by a greater share of time spent on non-agriculture activity and a greater share of income earned from non-agricultural activities. This thesis is motivated by two concerns. First, what has been the impact of policy changes on livelihoods and income structure of rural households in the Mekong River Delta? Second, is there a link between income diversification and changes in poverty and consumption in the rural areas of the Mekong River Delta? I chose the Mekong River Delta as the site for this research as it is considered the most important agricultural producing region of Vietnam. In terms of methods, this thesis relies on payloads and cross-session data collected from five rounds of the living standard measurement survey conducted in Vietnam over the period 1993 and 2006. The thesis deals with three specific issues. One, what are the factors and trends in diversification? Two, what are the determinants of income diversification? And three, what is the link between diversification and poverty reduction in the rural areas of the Mekong River Delta over the period 1993 and 2006. Now, I would like to explain them in detail. First, in terms of diversification, 
while using a number of measures of diversification, special attention is paid to assessing diversification from the input side in terms of time spent on different activities. And from the output side, in terms of income shares attributable to different shops. On the input side, the time spent on farm sale employment declined by 16 percentage points. Why? Time spent on non farm wage employment rises by 12.5 percent the points. Time spent on other activities such as off farm sale employment and farm wage enrichment remains relatively stable. On the output side, the importance of income from crops, of farm sale employment, farm waste employment declined by about 5 to 7 percentage points for each of While the share of non farm waste employment and transfer increases by about 9 percentage points each. The interesting aspect of the patterns is that. Where household in the poorest expenditure quintals still continue to rely heavily on agriculture related income. They experience similar patterns of change in terms of a movement from relying on farm income to non farm sources of income. These patterns suggest that the movement towards non farm wage employment may be driven by policy changes that affect the entire economy and not just specific groups of households. Second, in terms of determinants, the analysis is based on framework that the sector like diversification as a function of a household capacity to diversify and incentives to diversify. The main points emerging from the analysis, regardless of panels or process and estimate, is that income, income diversification is strongly affected by household capacity. Both household labor quality and quantity play a substantial role in directing household to non farming waste activity. The study temporal increase in the importance of the capacity variables in trying time allocation patterns despite the increase in the supply of educated labor suggests that over the periods labor demanded across all education levels by non-farming enterprise outstrips labor supply. The estimate also show that over time, regardless of household labor, land, or financial capacity, there, there is a secular tendency to move toward non-farming wage activities. So, I now move to the link of uh, income diversification to consumption. That scriptive analysis shows a spectacular increase in consumption and a decline in both the, from 48.5% to 15%, which had occurred without much change in inequality. A consumption decomposition exercise shows that about 18% of the increase in consumption may be allocated to increases in household capacity, more air efficient, more workers, while the remainder, the remainder may be attributed to non-household specific attributes, attributes. To emphasize, about 80% of the exchange in consumption is due to factors that are not particular to household. But due to factors which affect the economic environment in which households operate. Panel data estimates also deliver the same message. Of particular interest 
in terms of isolating an element of change in the economic environment, which may help play a role. The analysis showed that the increase in price prices between 1993 and 1998 due to removal of internal and external restrictions plays an important role in reducing both the between 1993 and 1998. The analysis shows that some of the same factors that try diversification have on labor quantity and quality also try increases in consumption. Therefore, the main story is that when household capacity does play a role in affecting both diversification and consumption, is a largely change in prices and economic incentives that have been the driving force behind both outcomes. More broadly, this thesis supports the idea that institutional and policy changes in the last 20 years have provided the impetus for the growth and poverty reduction experience in the Mekong River Delta and in Vietnam. While, while identification of the particular policy measures that underlie change in the economic structure and environment are beyond the scope of the thesis. Just the most just the motion, the micro uh, microeconomic analysis with the institutional change over the periods suggests that the combination of policies that promoted private ownership of land use rights for agricultural land and freedom of trade were most important in the early periods of 1993 and 1998. While in the more recent periods of 2002-2006, the expansion of non-farming occupations is most likely to have been driven by changes in the enterprise law, which promoted the setup and expansion of domestic and foreign companies. Finally, while the analysis reported here supports the idea that the change have had positive effects in Vietnam, these effects may by no means be universal. Is it quite possible that similar policy changes in another context may and indeed have had different effects on poverty and inequality. Notwithstanding this cautionary note, this thesis has shown that in the Mekong River Delta over the period of 1993 and 2006, there has been a clear and across the board shift out of farming activity, a large increase in levels of household consumption, and that the majority of these changes may be attributed to changes in the institutional environment facing households. Thank you for your attention.